we're in Scotland. I'm doing a 500 mile round trip for some small car parts that have been annoying me that I can't find anywhere else. So I live near Manchester and uh, we are currently, we've just crossed the Scottish border, just past the Gretna. We're not getting married, we've already done that. <laughs> but we're going up to you pull it in Inverkeithen. Normally I go to the one in York, especially when I lived in Hull. And uh, you pull it as a scrapyard, if you don't know, um, there's one in York, one in Inverkeithen, up near Ross Ith, where you can basically go pay a pound uh, and go around and whatever cars are, you can just take bits off them and charge the charge a lot cheaper than you would in than you'd find like on the second hand market. The reason I'm going up to the Inverkeithen one is because there's been no, I've been checking ever since I got the car a couple of months ago, there's been no CLKs uh, scrapped in either of them, uh, which is probably good, you know, people are keeping the cars on the road, they're lasting, but really bad for me when I want parts that people are charging a premium for. I'm going to get some parts, you're going to see me in the scrapyard if they let me film, and then I'll talk you through what we're getting and why. See you there. So I didn't end up filming while I was in the scrapyard. Um, it was really busy. There was nowhere good to set up. Like it was kind of the car that I was picking parts off was like right at the back. Uh, and I felt a bit awkward. There was there was quite a lot of people going around. So yeah, didn't film anything. Um, we've seen a bit of B-roll of the journey. Went through about eight different weather systems. Um, yeah, what did I do? Seven and let me let me check. Seven hours, eighteen minutes drive, four hundred eighty-seven miles, and uh, fifty-three point six miles to the gallon average. I'll take that. Three quarters of a tank, uh, it's up me to get up to Scotland about nearly 500 mile round trip. Uh, cannot complain at that, yeah, very happy with that. <laughs> so, what did I go for? Why did I drive so far for some parts? Well, on the W209, there's not many of them that are breaking, um, and they tend to command a bit of a premium, the parts over something like C-Class, which would be a bit more common. I can get parts for like dirt cheap. Now, I needed a few little bits that I didn't really want to pay a lot of money for. <laughs> So, let me show you what I got, and uh, the rationale behind it. So, one thing I got was the shell of a steering wheel. There was an airbag, but I didn't end up taking it. Um, but I got the shell of a steering wheel. Mine is battered all the way up here. So I got that. But again, there, 70 odd quid on eBay, maybe 50 quid if you're lucky. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't really pay much for that. New Mercedes badge, because normally I would just buy a new one off eBay, but uh, this was a, what looks like a genuine one. It's got all the markings, Mercedes. And it's immaculate, and mine is all, all the blue is gone, so it doesn't look like anything, it's just a silver round bar on the, just a silver round block on the, uh, on the bonnet, so, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna swap that out, that was, uh, free. We have a wing mirror, well we have two wing mirrors, <laughs> and these actually are a bit of a gamble, because I meant to check mine to see if they're the right, uh, the same wiring configuration, there's different models, I think if you have memory, there's like a different connector and some other thing, um, there's a different, there's a few different models. But I'm going to check um, and see, well at some point, probably not today, but I'm going to check and see if they're right. Because these are £50 each, and mine, I'll show you what mine does. Mine does this. It's really annoying, and my wife C-Class does it well. I've, told, I've, I've already replaced both of theirs with used ones at some point, and they're doing them again. Uh, but there's a gear, the, the motor has like a gear on top of it which allows it to fold in and out. Basically, it just, um, I think there's play in it basically, so it does that. So as you're driving along, it can wobble a bit, um, not too much, but the worst thing is I don't really want to fold it in because I'm not sure it'll fold back out. The guy told me not to do that. And there is an option on the dash where you can uh, get this to, when you lock the car, you get to fold in, both of them. And it looks really neat and I want that working. Um, so yeah, on that side. So I need to take the door card off and check the wiring for this. 
Um, and when I do take the door card off, what I'll do is replace the trim. So, as you know, I have this oh, very awful, very bright old man wood trim, and I want to modernise this. So I got some of the carbon cube, I think that's what it's called, well, <laughs> that's come from a BMW world that, because they call it carbon cube on like the uh, E46 and the E9 and stuff, but it's similar. Um, and it's not immaculate, you know, there's a few marks here and there, but it's, like the wood is immaculate, that's the bad thing. Um, it's a shame to get rid of it, but it's going to look so much sportier. The only thing that's missing is the cigarette lighter um, down in there, but my, I'd have to get a new unit for mine anyway, because it doesn't actually open. Sorry, the cover where the cigarette lighter is. And the one that goes around the gear stick is a bit battered. But each of these trim bits are like £30 individually on eBay. There are some available, I'm not paying 30 quid, 60 quid. 90, 120, you know, etc. Whereas I got all these for probably, I don't know, 20 quid or something. So if I have to buy two pieces, that's a lot better than buying all of them. I don't mind if I've got the majority and I can just piece together the rest. Um, I got an air pillar trim. Bit dirty, but it will uh, it'll clean up fine. Mine has a mark on it just here, um, and then I'll probably have to get this recovered at some point. You can't really see it. Can I? Can I make that better for you? No. Try and edit in, but there's a burn mark on the uh, on the air pillar. So the air pillar itself is a is a bit. Uh, there's a few scuffs on it, and then actually above it on the headline, and there is a uh, there is a burn mark. And I'm just realising that now because I thought that was actually on the air pillar, so it might not solve my problem. But uh, it's, it's in better condition than the one I had. Also got switch. Mine has a bit of finish missing. Don't mind the Fredos. Mine has a bit of finish missing, and actually that's really loose. It's, I've pulled it too far at some point, and it's come off. So whereas this is a good working unit, I think it's genuine. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll swap it out for that. Now this was one of the main reasons I went, these real lights, they're 100 quid for a set on eBay um, and these are the facelift lights, so you see how these look like little, little uh, sort of magnet shaped ones, these are like the E-Class, the more like the band. I like these a lot better, um, very slightly tinted in the middle, I just, I just prefer the look of these and the fit straight apparently, apart from you've got to bend a tiny bit of metal, which becomes very apparent where you've got to bend when you're doing it apparently, so we're going to get them on today. I've just been out and bought some new bulbs. Uh, I'm going to water some. I don't like this uh, fried egg look when you put an indicator bulb in there. So I'm going to water some of the silver vision bulbs. I couldn't get any of them local today. So they're chrome bulbs, but when they blink, they blink amber, obviously, for the indicator. Um, and at the minute, the indicator in on here is in the red. It's in the red bit. Why do that? I don't know. I just don't like that. I just really don't like that. I don't know why. But yeah, just uh, I think it looks really dated on this. Really dates the car, the back end. So I'm hoping these will freshen it up a lot and get the back end to where I want it to be, combined with the rest of the plans I have for this. Now unfortunately I did miss out on the big ticket item that I wanted, which are 300 quid on eBay, uh, which was a pair of Xenon headlights for these factory Xenons. Um, they were intact on, those. I got all these parts of one car and there's another car pre-facelift, uh, which the headlights are the same throughout the pre-facelift and the facelift. I wanted the Xenons, because uh, I think you probably would have charged me about 40 quid each and yeah 300 quid on on ebay um I'm still torn as to whether if i was going to get them dirt cheap i would have gone that route i'm still torn now whether to buy a second hand pair of normal headlights and compare them like i did on the c class and to buy leds you know a custom unit or whether to just wait for some factory xenons the halogen headlights are quite expensive on these anyway and they're not the same as a c class so i'm gonna have to i think the cost eventually is going to be quite similar see if you can tell me how much I paid for all this stuff at you pull it. So I've got two wing mirrors, loads of interior trim, switches, um, the uh, the free mirror badge, <laughs> um, the rear lights and the air pillar. You know, considering these are all 50 quid each parts on eBay for like the big ticket items. So yeah, see if you can see why I thought it was worth it. And I'll tell you at the end. They were in there. Okay, well, I didn't have to bend anything, so I'm not really sure 
what's going on there. Um, it sits pretty much the same, like tiny bit indented there. Um, so it's sitting on the side, that's just crap. So yeah, it just fitting fine. Look at that, way better, way better from the back. Um, you can see it sort of like for like in the before and after. But uh, yeah, now I just need to press plates. Different surround, some LED. Number plate lights, same as I got on there. It's a winning formula basically. <laughs> I do it to pretty much every car. LED number plate lights, um, press plates, and usually either stick the plate on, or in this case, I've got little tabs, little standoff things, so you have to use some sort of uh, surround. Unless you grind them smooth, but then it don't quite fit yet, so you've got to do it. So, yeah, get in there, get in there. So, that's enough for tonight. Some point during the week, um, so I'm at a wedding on the weekend, so I can't really do much next weekend. So, at some point during the week, probably after work, I'll. Uh, I'll see if we can have some bits arriving, um, you know, some some of the finishing touches. See if we can find some of the trims, and then I'll do that as a wanna. Can't be asked doing it piecemeal. And I need a boot light. I've just realised that my boot light wasn't working. I was like, why is it so dark? So I'll get an LED one for in there. I'll brighten it up as well in, in the boot itself. So uh, catch you in the next clip, and I'll tell you what we did. Well, that didn't work for some reason. Uh, just using multimeter, and there's no power getting to the actual unit uh, or the wires. So. I'm not really sure where, because it goes right up into the lattice of the of the boot. I'm not going to focus <laughs> into, <laughs> into like the lattice of the boot, so I'm not really sure where. Like I can't really be bothered to go route that through. Um, might just see if we can find a switch live somewhere in there, and just put like an LED strip in there anywhere. Just like up at the top, maybe. There and there. But I don't really use the boot that much anyway, so don't really bother me. Anyway, now, uh, off camera, I'm just going to wash this because it is absolutely disgusting. There's like a bug graveyard after going up to Scotland for those parts. Cat prints everywhere. Bug graveyard. It's not good. So we'll get it all cleaned up. Look at the wheels. Dark. Okay, we're going to work on the centre console bits first to get these in. Uh, then I'll do the door cards. So, uh, I did have a cigarette lighter to turn up, so that's good, happy days. So I believe if it's anything like the 203, this is kind of... Yep. Okay. And this just... Jesus. Okay, not ideal. It's been a few days, um, it's been really bad weather, so uh, I'm back on it now and I forgot one of the trim pieces when I was up in Scotland. So I had to buy one off eBay and I realised one of the centre console ones around the um, climate control, 
the legs on the back of it were missing. Didn't really realise it at the time, but that means it kind of wobbles about. It doesn't stay in place, so I run a one of them. So 15 quid each on eBay, which is pretty cheap. And no one wants the aluminium, I don't think. Um, but I do. But <laughs> so yeah, can't complain, but all it added a bit to the price tag. So what I'm doing now, while I've got the door cards off, while I was finishing up um, with, when those pieces came, swapping the mirrors over. So I've done one to make sure I'm confident because I couldn't find anywhere online how to do a 209 uh, mirror. But I managed to find some, some absolute hero posted. Uh, yeah, we're going back to the 90s, boys. We've got the analog instruction printed out in black and white and where I spilled my drink on it the other day. So following this, I managed to do it. So I'll try and, if I remember, I'll leave a link to this in the description if anyone's interested. Uh, I might do a separate video just showing how to do the 209 uh, wing mirror just does like a real short section because it might help a lot of people um, but yeah it's pretty pretty involved um here's remnants of the other one um so you basically use the body from this because i know they're working and then the covers from the other one but you've got to take it pretty much fully apart um so yeah not ideal well you can keep the frame from the other you just got to swap all the covers onto um and the there's like a i'll show you <laughs> So to get it apart, uh, basically you want to leave it on the car, obviously I'm taking, I've got this one off already because it's a spare one. Uh, you want to pop the glass out, I'll show you this on the car as well, you want to pop the glass out, pop the mirror uh, the mirror like motor out, so there's two bolts there and then one there, there's, there's three bolts. And then you want to take out the indicator as well, there's a bolt there and it just kind of, from the back, it just pulls out this way, just be careful. Um, sort of just maybe pry something there and just be real gentle with it or put something there and pry it out. Uh, just be real careful so you'd actually split the lens, which I did on this other one, but I think that's because it was pretty degraded. Um, and then you want to take these three bolts out, so one, two, uh, three, and then there's a couple of tabs that you can see. So there's one here that kind of pulls down and then you can pop against it. There's one here, and then there's two there like at the top, so they pull down, pull down, but then it'll be anchored onto the body as well. So you kind of got to do that, then fold the mirror, um, and then you can pull it off and then you can pull the back cover off and then you can pull The front cover off fully if that makes sense, but I'll show you on the car I just want to show you now so when I'm talking about it um, I might be in the way of it while I'm doing it myself Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really want to hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you Oh yeah Okay, next day, uh, let me show you the interior. I've just cleaned it because it was atrocious in here um, for kind of reasons I'll talk about in a bit. But the mirrors have started folding out when I open the door, so that's fine. <laughs> so let's let's see that. So if I lock it, the left hand side one squeaks a bit, but that's fine. So I get in. Uh, automatically fold out, so that's good, that works. So let me show you the interior, so a lot better. Look at this trim, shoo! Nice and clean here, yeah. gonna put a fresh air freshener in a minute. Yeah, looks absolutely spot on. Why oh, I got something on my lens? Is that lighting? I think I've made it worse, if anything, I will sort that out with a bit of glass cleaner and microfiber, but you could get the picture, so this is the worst bit still. Um, marks around the edges um but because of the pattern it kind of yeah it kind of doesn't show so i got this new piece in that doesn't 
you know, fold itself. Um, I've got that piece which I'd forgotten, like an idiot. And yeah, we've got nice new bits here. Luckily I managed to grab a switch as well, because mine was uh, coming off when you pull it, it was just falling off, so that's good. So yeah, pretty happy, it looks a lot smarter in here now. Um, did put an LED light in here last night, but then it stayed on constantly. Um, I think I didn't get a canvas compatible one, and this pulse is like a, you know, with a resistor, and this pulse is like a tiny bit of voltage through. So I need to get a canvas one. I just had them laying around from something, so I thought I'd try it. That looked a lot better, it was, it was good when it was in, so we'll get another one of them, get one of them in the front and rear, and it really tidies and um, makes the interior look a lot more modern. So pretty much where I want it to be. I don't have heated seats yet. I don't know if I can bother to ever retrofit them. We'll maybe try it, we'll see how the project goes. But the one thing I do want, and then the interior is kind of like complete as far as a, yeah, a, a must do is this steering wheel. So I'll get that trimmed at some point. So the reason the interior is dead is because I and the RAC recovery guy was climbing in and out of this car. So yeah, boots and sand and mud at the side of the M62. So what happened was um, for a while, this has been every now and again, like literally like a month, every every month or so. It cut out when I boot it and it was kind of like when it went fully hot, well, not freezing cold, I never boot it when it's freezing cold, but it was like when it's sort of like three quarters of the way up to temp, it just died and cut off. And I'd turn it off, turn it on again, and it'd be fine um, for like a, literally another month. That's why I forgot about it. I was like, oh, I'll sort that. Um, so, you know, my own fault. And yeah, basically it stopped doing that. Um, and it did it on the way up onto the motorway. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever, it'll be fine. And then, yeah, it did it on the motorway. And then it wouldn't go again. And it was like, I was on the hard shoulder. Finally, I managed to coast off the smart motorway onto a bit that was at the hard shoulder, just past the M6. And yeah, <laughs> pulled over and it'd, I'd, it'd turn on. I'd clear the code, turn on. And then I'd get about 20, 30 yards and it starts start to, and then it cut out again. So anyway, code seems to be the same every single time, apart from once I got code for the accelerator sensor, but I think that was uh, erroneous code. What I've been getting is PO251 off the top of memory. If it ain't right, I'll put it up in the in the top. And that is fuel pressure. And on the fuel rail on these, there's a fuel pressure sensor and a valve, which is like the regulator. So I changed the regulator. That's what most people said it was like to be. Seemed fine. Um, and then it does it. It did it the other day once. I don't know whether that's, you know, whether it's going to do it or not. But it takes a while to start up now, um, or a bit longer than it used to. So. I want two bags of being out in it, but um, yeah, and it stinks as well. In fuel, right? It smells like an old bus. If you've ever been behind an old stagecoach lorry it, it, uh, bus, it smells like that. So I think it's not fueling right, and I think probably the high pressure fuel pumps on its way out. But I've lost confidence in taking this on a long journey, which is annoying. I was going to go to an event for work that's quite far away. I was going to say this, but I'll get a higher car for now. I'm basically waiting to see if it does it again. Um, that's a bit of a difficult thing to do, but if it keeps doing it, then I know that it's probably the high-pressure fuel pump. And if this starting gets worse and worse over time, then it's probably going to be the high-pressure fuel pump because that's longer cranking and, and, you know, loss of fuel pressure is a symptom of the high-pressure fuel pump gone. You can get a refurbished unit for 250 quid with, like, a two-year warranty on it. Not the end of the world, not ideal when I want to be putting money into good things for this, um, fun things. But... It is what it is. I think after that, the engine will probably go forever. I mean, touch wood. It seems fine, so I'm going to just monitor that. But yeah, if you guys have any thoughts regarding the high-pressure fuel pump on the OM612, it seems an easy job to do. Um, you know, are my symptoms what you'd expect for that? Let me know. Comment down below, and yeah, let me know. But as of now, we're moving forward with other bits. So I might make a start on some other plans I've got for this, or I might... Um, I might get a few other little bits. I need to get some press plates and some LED lights, like the interior, the exterior, uh, the door lights and stuff like that, the number plate lights. Um, and I think I've got a lead on some Xenons for very cheap, possibly free. So that's really what I wanted. I wanted some Xenons for this. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. The guy's pretty pretty sound, so we'll see. So you'll probably see that in the next episode. So thanks for watching. Please, uh, please do hit that like button if you liked it. If you want to see more on the CLK, if you want to know how to do anything in particular on these, let me know. I can make a video. I like doing how-tos as well. I'm doing more vloggy stuff, but I do like doing how-tos. So yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, etc. See you later.